What's up guys, I'm Chris Spaggs here, back with another Four Corners video for today's five-game MLB main slate, courtesy of Osmo.com. It's a short slate today, as well as an early starting one with a 635 lock on the East Coast, so make sure to adjust your clocks accordingly. And right now, like this video and leave a comment down below giving me your guess to which pitcher is going to have the most strikeouts today. I'm going to keep giving you guys little challenges in the hopes of giving you things that will actually help you get better at lineup building. So right now, let's focus on the pitching. It's a slate where pitching is going to be important. So like this video right now and comment which pitcher you think is going to have the most strikeouts down below. Below. And coincidentally enough, the first corner I want to touch on today are the top pitchers on today's slate. And Patrick Corbin against the Dodgers is going to be a top-owned option industry-wide. He gets 3.9 implied runs against him, and he's an expected top-owned option on DK and FanDuel with 46% and 30% respectively, while he'll be number two on Yahoo with 46% there. Corbin has been solid this year, but he isn't missing bats at as a lead of a level with an 11.6% swing strike rate and 31.3% chase rate compared to 14.9% and 36.8% going back to last year in both those categories. Corbin's still worth exposure, but the Dodgers seem like a dangerous matchup as well as possible leverage as both stacks and one-offs. So I like Corbin here, but I'm definitely going to have less ownership in the field and also going to be going against him a little bit because it's a short slate and you got to find leverage somewhere. Now the other side, Rich Hill versus Washington will also be a highly owned option today with 3.1 implied runs against him, which is the lowest on today's slate. Washington has a 27% K rate versus left-hand pitching this year, so that's going to help him out a bit. Hill's also been appreciably worse than last year with an 8.1 K per nine and an 8.2% swing strike rate, as well as 10.8 hits per nine allowed and a 9.1% home run rate in a very limited sample size so far. The Vegas total does indicate a bounce back spot, but the righties in Washington like Victor Robles, Anthony Rendon, and Jan Gomes all are over a 140 WRC plus versus left-hand pitching. I think Hill's fine here. The Vegas total really does support him getting back on track. I think this Washington lineup does pose some danger, and I will have some exposure for them as well. And Michael Waka going against Pittsburgh is also going to be a top-owned option today industry-wide, which shows you the slate we're dealing with. He gets 3.9 implied runs against him, and Pittsburgh's 311 on-base percentage and 238 batting average versus right-hand pitching is the main reason to hope for success. Waka has been good this year with a 1.6 whip and a 4.8 xFIP, but the Pittsburgh matchup may be bad enough for him to have value. It's really all you're hoping for out of Waka here. He's not a good pitcher. He's not a guy I'm really dying to get to, but Pittsburgh's bad enough or maybe he has some value. So sure, sign me up for some Michael Waka. Waka Waka. The next corner I would have hit on are the top stacks on today's slate and a Yankee stack going against Mike Leake is going to be a popular option. You get 5.3 implied runs for them, which is the highest on the slate. And Leake is allowed 11.6 hits per nine and 44.8% hard contact this year. The Yankees are still not at full strength, but this righty heavy projected lineup hits well versus right hand pitching with a 196 aggregate ISO and a 108 WRC plus. These guys here aren't the best Yankees you're going to get this season, but they are a pretty good match here versus Mike Leake, a guy who just hasn't looked good on the air. I like the Yankees today, and the Vegas total does back that out as well. The Houston stack versus Mike Miner should be popular today, and also will probably pop up a lot in optimizers. They get 5.1 implied runs in their favor, and they're priced down for the match with Miner, who's been mostly good on the year with a .95 whip and 5.9 hits per nine allowed. There's lots of ownership expected for Houston, as I mentioned, due to the price drop, and it seems worth some exposure despite Miner's quality pitching. I think Houston I will be a little bit under the field on. They're in a fine spot here, but Miner's looked good enough for I'm not dying to get there a ton. Again, the prices though are very appealing, so I don't mind going there at a pretty good amount of volume. And a St. Louis stack versus Joe Musgrove will also have some ownership today with 4.6 implied runs for them. Musgrove has been solid on the year with a 1.04 whip and 12.1% swing strike rate, but he can give up some damage. And Matt Carpenter is expected to be the most owned piece here due to the leadoff spot and Musgrove struggles versus lefties with a 1.35 whip and 10.2 hits per nine allowed. It's really going to mostly be ownership on Carpenter and Goldschmidt. So if you go with a full stack, you'll probably differentiate a little bit. I don't love going against Musgrove. I think he's a better pitcher than he gets credit for. He just doesn't get a ton of strike outs, but I think it's a decent spot here to go to the Cardinals and I'll have some exposure because it's a short slate and they are a team who can't hit. The next corner I want to hit on are some of the lower owned options on today's slate and it's going to be ugly. Wade Miley versus Texas is a guy who I'm interested in today. He gets 3.9 implied runs against him and he's a horrible strikeout pitcher, which is 5.5 Ks per nine, but on a short slate with a cheap price and a potentially volatile higher price pitching option situation, he's playable to me. Texas projected lineup has four lefties and only two hitters over a 100 WRC plus versus left-hand pitching. And they've also struck out with the 27.8% K rate versus lefties this year. Wade Miley, not a good pitcher, but this is about as good a spot as you're going to get for him. So don't mind going him today at a reasonable price on a short slate where he's not going to be terribly highly owned. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I am interested in a Dodger stack going against Patrick Corbin today. They get 3.9 implied runs for them, which is not the best, but it is leverage against a highly owned pitcher with a team who can generate runs across the board. Kike Hernandez, Justin Turner, David Fries, and Max Muncy, all have a WRC plus of over 120 versus left-hand pitching, and they're priced down for the matchup. And Corbin is a guy not looking as good this year as he did last year. He's going to probably get better throughout the year, but for right now, I think this Dodgers team can attack him. I think it's a good leverage spot here on a short slate, so I like going to the Dodgers today. Mike Soroka versus Arizona also looks good to me with 4.3 implied runs against him, which is not the best for a pitcher, but Soroka's going to be significantly lower owned than the other top options, and he's been good in 2019 with a 1.01 whip and 10.3 Ks per nine. The Arizona lineup does have power, not a ton of strikeouts versus right-hand pitching, but Soroka has upside if he continues missing bats and limiting damage with no home runs allowed on the year. Soroka's a pretty good pitcher from what we've seen this year. He might be due for some negative regression, but it's a spot where I'm willing to go to him a little bit here because I don't think the top owned options today are looking the strongest, and I think Soroka's a guy who 
does have some strikeout upside. The Seattle Sack versus J.A. Happ is also a pretty interesting situation to look at. They get 4.2 implied runs for them, and Seattle's a 349 OBP, 208 ISO, and a 122 WRC plus versus left hand pitching this year. Happ is going to be owned today, but he's looked bad this year with a 9.5% swing strike rate, 5.1 XFIP, and 5.6% home run rate allowed. Seattle's lineup is overperformed versus left hand pitching, but Happ can be hit. Happ's stuff may not be there. Another pitcher today is going to be owned and whose stuff hasn't looked up to snuff so far this season. So I'm willing to go to some Seattle stacks today in the hopes to differentiate. They're not going to be highly owned. The last corner I want to hit under the one offs I like the most on today's slate in Justin Turner versus Patrick Corbin. Boy, I'm really going against Patrick Corbin today. Is a guy who I like quite a bit. Justin Turner's reasonably priced and he's seen the ball well recently with a 160 WRC plus and a 241 ISO versus left hand pitching going back to last season. And if you look at his photo here, he does look like Tormund from Game of Thrones. So it's a very timely reference to have Justin Turner here in the four corners. Like Justin Turner, I think he's turning things around in a spot here versus Patrick Corbin. I'm really not buying it on Corbin today, even though I will have some exposure. I think the Dodgers are a team I'm going to trust a lot, and Justin Turner will be a key part of what I try to do to get leverage on the field. Luke Voigt versus Mike Leake is also a guy I like a lot today as a one-off. He's had a 7.1% home run rate and 238 at-bats versus left-hand pitching going back to last year. Well, Leake is allowed a 4.6 home run rate to righty hitters, so it's a good matchup here. Voigt, a guy who's getting a lot of home runs. He's had sustainable home run power as well, whereas Leake is a guy who's been really bad on the year. He's been bad going back to last year. He's probably just not good, I guess you could say. So I think Luke Voigt's in a really good spot here, and he's probably going to be a big contributor for this Yankees lineup. And one more spicy take for you before we hit the road. Anthony Rendon versus Rich Hill is also a guy I like today. Rendon's got a 303 ISO and a 150 WRC plus versus left-hand pitching going back to last year. And Hill hasn't looked fully up to snuff this year, as I mentioned earlier. He also has 46% hard contact allowed to right. He's going back to last season when he actually was pitching better. So it's a good spot here for Rendon. He's still kind of getting his form back after returning from injury. But I think it's a spot here where he can do some damage to Rich Hill, a guy who is known to blow up from time to time, even in games where he has success. So there we have it. A very contrarian four corners today, which you have to be on a five-game slate, I guess. So like this video and leave a comment down below about which pitcher you think is going to get the most strikeouts today. Again, we're doing a lot for lineup building with these little exercises down in the comments. I want to get you guys thinking about stacks, thinking about pitchers, thinking about the stuff that's actually going to help you win in tournaments. So right now, like this video and give me a guess to which pitcher has the most strikeouts today down below. And use that promo code SWITCHINHEDGE for half off your first month of any Osmo.com package. We have all the ownership projections, rankings, and projections that you can plug right into Fantasy Cruncher, as well as Fantasy Cruncher itself, all the access you need to help be better at building lineups. We have that for you at Osmo.com. So use that promo code SWITCHINHEDGE to get half off your first month of any package. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Four Corners video, hopefully more games. So good luck.